welcome to our second in our series of Udacity Talks, where we bring some of the most innovative people from Silicon Valley into the Udacity studio and ask student questions. Today, it's my pleasure to have my dear friend, colleague, co-conspirator, and just amazing role model, Astro Teller, here in the studio, with whom I've worked for many years. As many of you know, Astro leads Google's and Alphabet's X division. He's captain of moonshots. I think he defined the word moonshot that since Obama has adopted <laughs> into his speech. And he's one of the most innovative and best people I know on the planet. Astro, welcome. Thanks for having me, Sebastian. I'm really looking forward to uh, having this chat with you. I want to ask you some of the questions our students are asking, <laughs> sure. and they have submitted them through our website. How do you pick engineers that work at X? Do you look for something in these engineers? There are certain things that are triggers for us. So if we're in the middle of a conversation and you worked at Park for two decades and you're a MEMS expert and in the middle of me interviewing you, you mention offhandedly that you built a helicopter in your garage, I already know before the interview's done, we're going to hire you. you. There's just no question that someone who has that deep technical knowledge but fundamentally is a maker who has a deep excitement about trying to make hard, interesting, complex things, that's the kind of person who's going to fit at X. Here's a question from Elm. Um, this is embarrassing for me because he's younger than me. But he's, he's 38. He's been out of work for four years. He had an unspectacular career before that. How do the millions of people like me, like Elm, get a say in the future and help to bring it about? The world has no obligation to include you, and at the same time, the world has no reason to exclude you. And if you believe in yourself, I don't see any reason why you can't get more involved over time by doing things like training yourself up. You know, if I were starting over from the beginning right now, I would find the most exciting place I could find, and I would offer to do anything there. I actually think it's healthy to start over. I encourage people to start a new career at least once a decade. Part of the power of entrepreneurship is the naivete that it comes from not knowing all of the rules in your industry. Let me run some technologies by you and you just give me a yes yeah, or sure. no for the next 20 years. <laughs> Living twice as long. I think that's got a better than 20% uh, chance, but I'm worried that we're going to solve the physical problem in extending the life of our bodies without extending the life of our mind. Do you think in 20 years we have brain implants, specifically brain implants that let you read your brain and program new stuff into your brain without having to talk to people and read books and so on? Yeah, I think it'll be more limited than people imagine in a variety of ways. It will be at first a prosthetic for people who have specific problems. It will help blind people to see again and that sort of thing. I think synthetic biology happens not to be something that X is working on right now, but I predict that 20, 30 years from now, people are programming cells and life more generally in a way that looks a lot more like engineering than it does like science, chemistry, or biology. Will we cure cancer? No, but we will have taken can So over the last 30 or 40 years, cancer has been taken down several notches. And I think what we'll see over time is that more and more cancers will move from the death sentence category to the chronic condition category. Will cars fly? Yeah. That's a clear yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a clear yes I've heard so far. What other great things will happen in 20 years that will surprise us? <laughs> Uh, so here's one of the ones that isn't a specific technology, but it's just a different way of thinking about things that excites me a lot. That you could think of generally as robotics, but I would think of as intelligent technology. Historically, people have thought about making things strong or safe or useful in very mechanical ways. You make a car safe by making it strong enough and crumply in the right way that even if it slams into a brick wall, the people inside will be safe. Looking at the car, for example, it's starting to make sense to people to think about, wait, instead of having it survive the smash into the brick wall, what if we made it smart enough that it just never hit the brick wall? And I predict that a huge number of things in our world will go through this transformation. Share with me your thoughts on is AI good or bad? Artificial intelligence, like all technology, is a lever for the human mind. It is a way that to amplify 
human agendas. And I don't think artificial intelligence has shown any evidence of being different than guns or hydrogen bombs or electricity or the internet in having this fundamental characteristic that they can be very positive or very negative. And is it logically possible that artificial intelligence could end up being a net negative for humanity? It's possible, but I don't see any evidence that it's at all likely to happen, especially when humanity has very serious problems like global warming, and artificial intelligence stands a high chance to make the world a better place. The fear that robots will somehow enslave us because they want everything for themselves probably doesn't make sense for me because that's a classic human thing that we're doing, which is projection. I mean, frankly, I think we should be more worried that artificial intelligence will grow up to be smart enough that it will notice that the things in this world who have it really good are the dogs and the cats. They get to lie around all day, do nothing, and take care of us. If you were artificial intelligence and you were sm so smart you could have anything, would you really want to do all the work? Or would you basically pawn it off on us and lie around the house all day? <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> is it, wh but why is no one worrying about that? And the answer is because it's not fun to worry about that. So many students want to be like you. <laughs> what can they take away today? What they can do differently? What can you give them as a, as a last piece of advice to unleash their potential? Live without fear. If you make choices based on all of the bad things that could happen and spend your time thinking about what you can lose, um, you won't get most of what you want. And if you embrace life with passion and without fear, it won't always go perfectly. Living without fear is a fairly magical choice to make. That would be my recommendation. Astro, I love talking to you. I love you as a human being, and it's great to have you here at Udacity. It's great that you spend the time with our students uh, talking to them, and I find it super inspiring. Thank you for having me here, Sebastian. I'm a huge fan of Udacity. I really appreciate what you guys are doing for the world, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to help some. <laughs>